<laughs> What's up everybody? It's a way mover. My eyes are watery right now. Uh, for breakfast, I had five packets of oatmeal and a banana. For lunch, I didn't have anything. That was pretty much brunch. I had it at like 10. Uh, and for dinner, we had chicken fingers that my mom made and very, very tasty. I'm just hanging out today. This essay is killing me. I'm dying. I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I, it's chronic. You know, I'm, I'm actually, uh, going to die. So, no. <laughs> um, this is sort of a nightmare mode essay. Uh, I was supposed to read. So it goes from he here to here is where we're supposed to read to. But what? What? It's all like... It's just so dense, and it's a lot harder to read than the Hannah Arendt essay, and it's like, like, their dialectic is no less noticeable in the superstructure than in the economy. It would therefore be wrong to underestimate the value of these such theses as a weapon. They brush aside a number of outmoded concepts such as creativity and genius, eternal value and mystery, concepts whose uncontrolled application would lead to a processing of data in the fascist sense. What are you talking about? I don't, I, I, you know, I, I can't read this. Luckily, part one is pretty easy. It's talking about, um, like, how reproduction of art has become pretty easy, but, like, It's so, it's not, it's just not interesting. And it, it's so many parts. Like, let me skip ahead. I haven't even read a later in this essay. Let me skip ahead. What? There's a list? Oh, it's notes. Whew, okay. Um, let me, oh, that's an epilogue. Okay, this isn't as long as I thought it was. Um, yeah, let me read part uh, 15. Uh, the mass is a matrix from which all traditional behavior toward works of art issues today in a new form. Quantity has been transmitted, transmuted into quality. The greatly increased mass of participants has produced a change in the mode of participation. The fact that the new mode of participation first appeared in a disreputable form must not confuse the spectator. Yet some have launched spirited attacks against precisely this superficial aspect. Among these, Launch Spear oh, among these, Duhamel has expressed himself in the most radical manner. What he objects to most is the kind of participation which the movie elicits from the masses. Duhamel calls the movie a pastime for helos, a diversion for uneducated, wretched, worn out creatures who are consumed by their worries. A spectacle which requires no concentration and presupposes no intelligence which kindles no light in the heart and awakens no hope other than the ridiculous one of someday being a star in Los Angeles. Clearly, this is at ridic the, clearly this is at bottom the same ancient lament that see, that masses seek distraction whereas art demands concentration from the spectator. That is a commonplace. The question remains whether it provides a platform for the analysis of the film. A closer look is needed here. Distraction and concentration form polar opposites, which may be stated as follows. A man who concentrates before a work of art is absorbed by it. He enters into his work of a way the legend tells of the Chinese painter when he- What? He enters into this work of and the way. <laughs> he enters into this work of and the way the legend of the Chinese painter when he-, he view That's so crazy. <laughs> I, I, that's, it's, it's so crazy. I don't, dog, it's so over. It's so over, guys. I don't know how to read this. It's, it's crazy. Um, luckily, it was page 15, and I skipped a whole bunch of pages, so maybe it would make a lot of sense if I read all the pages before that. It probably would, right? I, you know, I'll have to read it. I'm gonna read it eventually. I'm gonna understand it. But it's just so silly, and it's not even stuff that you can write notes on, because you're sort of just, like, as soon as you look away from the page to, like, write your notes. You've lost your train of thought because it's just so convoluted and weird. 
it's like a it's like when you're reading it, 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 it like strings a web of concepts in your mind and it's not it, it's not like it doesn't stick very well you know um but you know yeah so today i woke up at 7 30 i think I, I woke up at like 7 30 i took a shower brushed my teeth um made breakfast uh, and then I did some math studying. I studied for my math exam a little bit, and then I realized I just knew how to do all the stuff I was studying for, so I did the math exam. Uh, and turns out I didn't know all the stuff in the exam, but um, I got a 93% on it, and that's totally fine. 93% is a good grade, so I'm not complaining. Um, I think I just hung out for a little bit, just did my thing, uh, started wearing my Yeezy Gap jacket, and then uh, I... Um, and I started to try and read this. It was, it's just so, it's just so difficult. I ended up taking a break and this is actually pretty cool guys. Check this out. Um, hold up. Uh, if you go onto my YouTube channel right now, um, you'll see that let me actually open this up in a private window. Yeah, so if you open up my YouTube channel right now and you go to the playlist section, you'll actually see all my videos from, all my Leo the PO videos from 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. And you can sort through all of them. Uh, and that's what I did after I took the break of, oh, can I make this bright again? There you go. Um, and that's what I did after I took a break from reading this. Uh, after that, you know, it's November 1st, so I did the, um, I did my net worth statement on my spreadsheet. Um, and luckily the markets are up. Today, in particular, uh, the Fed announced they weren't raising interest rates, um, so the stock market shot way up today. Uh, S&P's up, Dow Jones is up, it's good. Um, but you know, we'll see, we'll see. You know, a uh, recession might come and that's totally okay because if you invest, no matter, no matter how the market goes, if you invest $100 every month, you will be up. The S&P 500 has never had a period of time where it's been down after 20 years. So if you just invest in the S&P 500 and wait 20 years, there's almost a 100% chance that you will be up. So no reason not to invest, right? Um, so that's the concept. Even if there's a recession, I don't care. Uh, but it's great that the markets were up today. It's good, you know, when I do my net worth statement, it's a higher amount of money than was last month. So I'm happy about that. Um, you know, aside from that, nothing else is really going on. Uh, I kind of, like, luckily, section one is like a little easy it's like it's not um there's the preface where he talks about like marx's concept of like a base and superstructure um and then he talks about thesis and antithesis and uh synthesis uh which i did some very minor research on it when i was writing my notes and i thought it was a hegelian thing but hegel actually didn't make uh thesis uh antithesis and synthesis and synthesis. Uh, he actually was actually another guy who did that, and Hegel does something else, I think. Um, but you know, he talks about that. He talks about it in relation to like, um, like processing, like processing of data, uh, as in like under like, it's really weird. Like the preface is really strange and convoluted, and then section one is just talking about how it's gotten easier and easier to reproduce art, like first through just like skilled people, like re just recreating artwork. Um, and then in the future, like the printing press coming out and like photography and stuff and then photography, and, you know, eventually became, things became easier and easier to, to reproduce. And that's just what part one is about pretty much. Um, but it's each part builds on another part. And then by the time you're at the end, the preface will apparently make a lot of sense. So the preface is pretty much the thesis don't quote me on this, but it seems like the preface of the essay is the thesis for the essay, and then the 15 parts after that sort of just explain to you what the thesis means. Uh, so that's cool. Um, but I don't know what it's talking about with this Chinese farmer. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, but yeah, all right. Uh, see you, dude.